Sustaining a hamstring injury, whether it's a tear, a niggle, problems with the tendon are hugely common as triathletes. Problem is though, it's struggling how to figure out how to stop these from happening because usually once it happens once, it can happen again. And a lot of the time you can maybe not have the injury again, but you're always aware of it and it just holds you back from getting into that top gear, particularly when it comes to the running part of your triathlon. So we're really passionate about sharing today a couple of critical things, which are the reasons why that keeps happening. And it's because often these two critical things don't get talked about and don't get trained as part of your training program, whether that's rehabilitating or whether it's just looking after your own strength. So first of all, when you run, your hamstrings operate at two places. One is predominantly in the knee, when your foot strikes the floor. And the second one is also when your foot strikes the floor, but predominantly at the hip. Now both of those hamstrings muscles get taxed as they lengthen and that's absolutely critical because unless you train the right type of hamstring, unless you train it at the right angles, unless you train it when it lengthens, your chances of having another hamstring injury are significantly higher. But if you address those things in the right ways, that's where you can go forward, get faster, running, more confident and not have a repetitive hamstring injury. Common ways that you'll typically see of preventing hamstring problems is maybe funky balance exercises that aren't actually developing strength and are ways that are totally unspecific to running so they're not going to carry over. Right through to funky running drills and weird and wonderful warm-ups that are going to protect those hamstrings apparently, but in reality, don't. From a training perspective then, there are numerous ways that you can start with this, but some of the common things you see are maybe a little bit more aggressive to start with. So a good starting point is to use what we call isometric based strength exercises for your hamstring. That's just a fancy word to say it's strength training when the muscle doesn't change length. So your hamstring, it stays at a nice constant length. But what we can do during that strength exercise is we can move our foot position to change the length at which we're strengthening the hamstring muscle. So we're covering all bases. Good examples of that can be things like single leg hip lifts on the floor or on a bench where we've got a heel welded on into the floor or coach assisted hamstring holds via the hip, which we can also use as well if you've got another pair of hands with you at the same time. Then things can progress nicely into what we call eccentric focused strength exercise. This is the real pinnacle and the real area we need to get to because we know scientifically the bang for buck off this and how well it prevents hamstring injuries is actually pretty phenomenal. And this basically then means we're going to load the muscle now as it lengthens. Good examples of this from an exercise perspective could be doing things like a single leg Romanian deadlift. However, maybe if your stability is not that great, we can go into doing something maybe like a coach assisted hip extension as well at the same time. Again, they're hip dominant movements. The other one though, if it's a knee dominant movement that we want to focus on for that part of the hamstring, a classic thing that you've probably seen before is a Nordic hamstring exercise. And one tip that we always talk about is for most people, they can't do it at body weight because you need to be pretty damn strong. I can't do it at body weight. You can use bands for assistance just to make sure that you're contracting that muscle as it lengthens for a sufficient enough time as well at the same time.